Dangerous, you're alive. All right. Go. Will the operation please come to order? The principal business is the continuation of going through the budget. And you should all have the latest numbers where we left off. And that brings us to this part.
uh, red text there because uh, we were asked to verify that the bids or the, the alternative proposal for the janitorial contract were apples to apples, they were the same thing, and since we had our meeting last week, um, Eva has met with that company, so Eva, you and Dan want to share with what you learned? I was able to confirm, I'm sorry, <laughs> I was able to confirm that the prices are correct and that the difference in the two contracts are considerable and they're, they're coming lower. So um, I did speak to them about the situation with Nico. I don't know if they want to show them that they're Dom and Stuart. I'm sorry, we've run out of lunch, yeah. but those are chicken strips. If you care for them in their french fries, you know, right there, Stu and Dom. I also spoke to them about the special situation we have with the contract where they give Yuko a contract basically for the cost of a dollar and explained your facilities, the two gate houses, the laundry facility, thank you, coach, and uh, they were amenable to working something like that out. That would be on the agenda. No. No, this is a different company. Yes. Oh, okay. As is provided now. We're bouncing Alejandro. Oh, okay. No, we're not, we're not bouncing Alejandro. We are asked from time to time to make sure that, all right, we're keeping everybody honest and we're keeping our pencils sharpened. So we did not expect that this price would come in at, at you know at such a difference. But they're like a much forty thousand dollar difference, right? Correct. Right. They're a much larger company and are able to offer significant savings to you should you choose. What's the name of this company? Um, American, American Restaurant, Restaurant Services. ARS. They're out of Canada. Do you have experience with them anywhere else? Yes. Yes. Remember well, kind of they sent it out to the Hello. No one can hear you back here. Can you use the mics, please? Right. Sorry. Thank you. Hello? Yes, okay. <laughs> it's a new uh, company that we started in Pember Pine, so it's only been there for three months so far. So you're happy with it. I have not had any complaints from the administrator on that. Okay. 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 Yeah. Uh, we do have a three-year contract with Glow, which expires next year, October 31st of next year. So you can continue with it, or you can decide that you're going to make the change now, or wait to make the change when his contract is up. That's entirely up to you as the committee. And John had his hand up. Is that a 30, you can get out of the contract on a 30 or 60 day notice? 30 day. <laughs> I said go for it. <laughs> Who else? Did I see someone else? Was it John? Someone, anyone else raise their hands? Oh, Joyce. So are we happy with them? Are they doing a good job? They're so far doing a good job in Pembroke Pines. They're new down there. They've been there about three months. Um, from what I understand, they're doing a bang up job. You know, this is a decision that does need to be made. If you decide you want to change them out, they do need a little bit of lead time so they can put a crew together and also get the equipment here. So they need about six weeks. So, you know, we need to make a decision pretty quick. Seems like a significant reduction. <laughs> yes, it is. They also did say, I'm sorry, John, I'll get to it. They also did say that for anybody who wanted to change shirts, that they wanted to stay here, that they would take them on. They would hire them. That's good. Yes. I move we do the change. Speak up, Bob, please. I don't have the mic. Okay. I move that we do the change. I second it as soon as possible. Six weeks, eight weeks, four thousand, four thousand. Notice. Any further discussion on this? Four thousand. No. Hold on, David. Eva and Dan, are we dissatisfied with the service we're getting from GLOW? Not at all. That's correct. We're very happy with the service we get from GLOW, and I think I can speak for you, Go, that they're also very happy with the service that they're getting from GLOW. 
Obviously, there's a significant difference in, in, in price here. Um, I just want to add in two things. One, and if I didn't say it, Mr. Boas would say it, we're not uh, bound to go with a little bitter. Um, from my personal standpoint, I want to tell you that starting with the hurricane of 2017, I cannot tell you how many times Global uh, Cleaning Plus has straightened out jams for me. Whatever we need, if they take care of a company, yes, we're very reliant on them, and I think that counts for something. Yes, so please take that into consideration as you decide. Okay. There's always something of a risk in making such a change. But the other side of that is it's a significant reduction, uh, and as long as there's an out with this new company, uh, why not? It's a, it's it's a chance. It probably is worth uh, worth taking. Stewart, I always thought if you buy good, you have good, and if you're satisfied with the way the company is operating, and the cost is a bit more, but you're getting your uh, job done without any complaints, why change? Okay, John. Forty thousand dollars. That's the change. That's why. You know, forty thousand dollars a plot. The ticket price on thirty PRL will maybe go down, maybe go up, but an extra forty thousand dollars taken away is a good for the residents. Right. I totally agree with John. All right. Um, we need to look at. It. We, we, having to pay for this HVAC system now, right? And, and all the other increases that are gonna be coming, we need to look on things on where to cut. This is a good place to cut, right? Yes, they have, what, two or three months left or whatever on, on their, on their contract, another year on their contract. But it's, but it's gonna save us that much. But they're going to, they can get rid of them in six days. Hold on. Monica has on the draft 8781 raise in the unit to make up the shortfall. Forty thousand dollars is approximately five dollars per unit off. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Okay. Ruth. Oh, that's a good my question is of Donald. Donald. <laughs> Paid attention, I promise. <laughs> Glow handles our newspaper delivery. Will a new company be able to step in and do what they're doing? My hope to hit the answer would be yes, um, but I can't say that for sure. Um, Just something to keep in mind. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, the, and the, other, the other thing that came to my mind, uh, Ruth, is that since the current vendor has a year left on their contract, this time next year, uh, management will be, will be able to give you a, a real solid report on performance uh, rather than 90 days. Uh, what did you know about me after 90 days of me working on you? Know, you knew my snack intake, that's, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Any more discussion on this one? Oh, David. Increase. I don't know where Richard got the $87 increase. Up to the new draft page. Huh? Where does it say 8781? That's in parentheses. He's talking about the first page. Underneath the yellow. That's in parentheses. In parentheses. Yeah. Well, this does it mean an increase? It's a short thing. Well, that's does it mean an increase? No, that's... It does not mean an increase. No, no, no. The $87.81 that I think he's referring to is the shortfall for the air conditioning. So we're not talking about that right now. That was already taken care of. Correct. So there is no $87.81 increase. There's no increase like that at all. Thank you. I just have one question. Stuart, explain why their rates went up so dramatically? 
Yes, they wanted, um, they've asked for a 6% increase due to fuel costs and rising supply costs. So where the um, contract called for 2%, he asked for 6%. So that's the number that's in here that shows, okay, the 354 where the other company is coming in at 308,400. So it's basically a $46,000 savings. You know, again, we've had no problem with them. I know that um, Alejandro's made sure that anytime we have any kind of a request, anything that happens, he's on it immediately. We have zero complaints. Any contract that is over $10,000, just for your information, our contract comes into play. And then they sign our contract. We do not sign their contract. So there's always that 30-day out clause. But we've never even thought of initiating that with, with GLOW. Just so you know, we are perfectly happy with them. Again, when we solicited this, we did not expect that there would be this huge difference, but we just wanted to make sure that if anybody asked, we're doing our due diligence, and we would have an answer for you if you asked if we'd gotten a bid recently, because this is a three-year contract. Faster. What is the escalating clause on the new company, on the renewal of the contract? The escalating clause? Yeah, 2%, 3%, 5%? It's been, well, for the three years, it's been 2% with Glow. Okay, what is it with the new company? That's a good question. That's a good question. That's a good question. They're able, because of their size, to provide things at a lesser cost. Um, we have to nail that down. No, their current, Globe's current contract calls for a 2% increase effective November 1st, but he asked that it be increased to a 6% increase. My question is, the new, company. the new company's coming in with a ball, but their contract might have a 10 or 15% increase for the second or the third I year. Understand. So that's what my question is. It's year to year for the new company. So if we go into negotiations a year well, next that's following, it's not, you can negotiate at that time, but the new company only agreed to a one year, and that was our question as well, what we would like. That's so we should hold it. Uh, yeah. 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 Tuesday, two days ago, we received a change order. 
related to the HVAC project for $67,704. So I reflected that change order in these numbers on this front page. That's the only thing that changed. Uh, just want to bring that to your attention. Um, when was it cur uh, curbing uh, situation for the one of the uh, for the uh, three air handlers on the theater? Um, it really does. It does save us money because if we would have actually torn the roof and torn into the roof, okay, they found out it would have been more of a mess and open roof, okay, and then we had to redo the roof plus put the air conditioning. So the curb was put on top of the existing curb, was approved by the engineers to go forward, not only to get it done uh, faster, but to lessen up the cost of, of opening up the whole roof to take out a curb that was already existing. And the other one was a vent that was not in there for uh, a supply air vent, okay, for uh, some of the air conditioning units on a certain air that didn't have outside air. So they had to reduct it and put it through the roof and reset it like that. Um, I know there was a, uh, I think those were the two things. <laughs> those were the two big things. Yeah. Things were real small. Yeah. Um, okay, now exhibit one is this, this page, am mm -hmm. I correct? In here, it states uh, how will the shortfall short be funded. Right? And you have in here about three Can't hear you. Okay. It says how the short this shortfall will be funded per unit. Wow. Right. Per unit special assessment. I expected that. Use of windstorm designated reserves currently at 827,000. I strongly object to this because. May I finish? I strongly object to this because what's going to happen if we get a hurricane? Right? Then we're going to have another assessment on top of that. Or unless venison is going to take care of the roof on their own, which I doubt they will. You, you made that clear last week, and the vote was already taken on that. Do you want us to reverse that? I'd like to see that reserve. All right. Um, would any, Just pray we, that we don't get a hurricane. In all honesty, I have no idea what you said. You're talking about curves. I think of the roadway. Uh, what is it you need us to do here? Nothing. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just giving you an updated information because there was a change since last week. Fine. We're moving right along. Okay. All right. Page four. At the very top of the page, line 56, there was a minor change since last week. Our controls contractor notified us of an increase. So uh, the budget is $18,160. That's for the controls, for the clubhouse, the controls, all the air conditioning. Okay, the next change is line 58. And if I could refer you to Exhibit E, it's the very last page of your package. The only change here is that we have received the proposal for the main clubhouse men's locker room renovation, which we did not have last week. Right. You'll see that number in red on line five, 67500 Last week it was blank because we had not received the proposal yet. Yep. We had no number. So the committee, the committee's okay with that. We'll move on. Or yeah, move on. on. Move on. Everybody's okay with that. Yeah. Where are we going next? Okay. We're gonna go back to page four then. Okay. 
Line 59, uh, it's red only because I added the $50,000 that um, was suggested by Donald for the cleanup of the Weir Canal near the fire station. Oh. Right. Um, I understand he still hasn't heard back from Anchor Marine, so it's an estimate. It's an estimate. Uh, so that has been added. We finished the rest of this page last week. So if you could turn to page five, line 68 is security. And I'm going to let Eva handle this one because no, she's the one that's been talking to your platinum about the contract. Yeah, we're going to have to talk to Eva about the contract. So the, the increase reflects, of course, paying these, the guards more. And at the breakout of that would be the supervisor from 18 to 20. He's leaving in the spring, and we're going to have to hire a new supervisor. There's no one that's currently working that wants the position. So in speaking with Jim Cattell of Platinum, I asked him what he thought was a fair amount to get somebody that was going to have the qualifications we were going to need to take over. He thought that $20 was fair. I don't necessarily disagree with him. Okay, but we know that that's a very important position. Okay, so then where the um, assistant's making 16, I pencil them in for 17, and where the guards are at 14, I pencil them in for 15. That's in pocket. I'm sorry? That's in pocket. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> What's the delta? What is the bill rate and the pay rate? The pay rate is twenty dollars. The bill rate is twenty-eight dollars and seventy-one cents. I think you said it was the same as you got. And for a fifteen-dollar uh, guard, the bill rate is twenty-one dollars and fifty-three cents. Right, and the supervisor at 17, the bill rate is 24.40. So yes, it matches what, what you're doing. I got you. Mm -hmm. it. Yeah, it's a $76,000 increase from the budget this year. It's true, you have to. Yeah, what you pay for. And that's very true. You want somebody to fly by night? Hey, give them 10 or 12 bucks. You know, as long as you say, give them money. Okay. Yeah. Eva, uh, on the fuel, uh, Yuko has uh, recommended that we get our own credit card mm -hmm. and we pay for our own fuel rather than have them bill us back. Right, I remember I was at that meeting and right. I also brought that to Monica and Dan. So maybe uh, if you're gonna go through this, I think you guys should do the same. I don't think that that's what we were considering. We were not considering that. Uh, there's, uh, we have two options. One is they were going to bill us directly month to month. Okay. Yes, because they charge you a pass-through charge. No, it was supposed to be no no upcharge on the fuel. Right. Yeah. It should be passed. Whatever they and they would provide us with the it. actual right. invoice. Right. But if the price of gas goes down, we get the benefit of that. But it goes up, we have to get it. Correct. Right. Okay, we finish up. Okay. Ed. If I'm reading this right, it amounts to about a $77,000 increase for the year, as opposed to 2122 with 644.877. The proposed is 721.137. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's way over 10% increase in one year. It is 11%, 12% increase. Listen, I've done my research, Social Security, next year. They're looking anywhere between 9 and 10 percent. Right. That seems to be the number. Mm -hmm. You know, inflation and everything that's going on. Correct. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
Bob? Richard? Can you tell us what was the turnover this year? Because this raise will alleviate that. Well, I would say we've stabilized more in the past year, but when we were going through COVID, it was like a revolving door. I mean, you know, I think that they thought um, that it would be cool to wear a uniform, and then they, they came to the job. Some of them lasted a day. They just, whatever equipment they were carrying, the nearest surface they found, they put it down and they walked away, never even let us know. You know, so it's, uh, it's, it's a tough job. It's absolutely a tough job. And they are on the, they're the first line of defense. So somebody's angry before they get to anybody else, security gets it. And there's definitely been a decrease in respect towards security. You know, and that's just in general around the country. This is not specific to Century Village, West Palm Beach. You all know, if you're manning, you're off the front at UGO, you know exactly what the guards go through, what our staff goes through. We're all in that same boat. And it has deteriorated, and still is. It's not getting any better. So, yeah. Uh, having uh, worked some of these security issues for probably the last 15 years, these kids have no loyalty whatever. They're endlessly scanning for a dollar or something more, and they'll jump ship in a minute. However, I don't think there's anyone in here who'd like to sit out in those guard shacks in 90 degree heat, door open more than it should be, air conditioning failing. So I don't think this increase is so unreasonable. I think it should be more. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, ready to move on? Yes. All right. Line 69 is expenses for the ID office. This is primarily for our monthly fee that we pay to ADDI, which is the proprietor of our um, ID system, $295 a month, plus the miscellaneous supplies, ribbons, and cards. So $8,540. Line 71, uh, this next section is utilities. So line 71 is communications, $42,890. Um, DSL Express monthly charges of $2,580 for our fiber optic circuits, which supports all of our networks and IT functions at the main clubhouse and the pools, and our void telephone system, on and on and on. AT&T, uh, as well as Verizon cell phones, and push to talk uh, and radios for the maintenance guys. So it's not much of an increase for what the budget was this year. Line 72, sanitation service. Um, this is the uh, trash removal for the main clubhouse and Hastings. We're estimating a 5% increase. They usually go up every year. So $9,670. Line 73, FPL. I've estimated a 15% increase. We have no way of knowing exactly right now how much their increase is going to be, but they notified us recently of the millions of dollars that they have not passed on to their customers as a result of the increase in fuel cost. So I would be willing to bet come January, everybody's going to get hit pretty hard with some big increases from FPL. Um, line 74, this is your water sewer, Palm Beach County Water Utilities. This increase of 3.035 is a confirmed increase, which is effective from October of this year. Just got that information a week or so ago. So total utilities, $488,780. <coughs> Next line is uh, office, uh, postage, line 76. This is for the rental of the postage machine as well as the purchase of purchasing for mailing out collection letters, for mailing out payments to all of our vendors and that kind of stuff. It's actually a little bit lower. $13,192 is what we're asking for. 
uh, line 77 office expense. This is based on the historical use of all the office supplies and hoodie ink and toners, cartridges, paper, career services, um, compliance, the ADP compliance with the Affordable Care Act, time and attendance and payroll processing uh, from ADP. And the one thing that was added here is Eva and her office are asking for a letter folding slash stuffing machine for the accounts receivable department. So at least $2,268 a year. So total office expense, $27,818. These are free. Estimate. I, I, I hear it, but we're talking thousands and thousands. Maybe not so efficient to do it that way. I don't know how much correspondence has to be folded and stuff. She has over 600 a month. She's one person. All right, and just, just to give you an idea of how busy this poor woman is and inundated with phone calls. And you know, now when you call the doctor's office, they ask you to please only leave one message and not bog down their, their um, mail with repeated. She used to be able to, her phone would hold 500 messages and they would max that out. We had to limit it to 100 and this woman handles this you know, by yourself. We help as much as we can. And I think now she also is the one who gives out the estoppel information and you know what the sales have been like in this village. So Marge upstairs has pretty much taken that over just to help her. That's the office I came from. That's where I started. So I know how crazy it gets over there. And also we have more and more delinquents. And that's the truth too. When I first started in 87, there were really no mortgages in here. Everybody owned their units outright. So you know what happened in 2008, right? So um, it's happening again. So um, she is inundated because she's only one person. So that machine would help her a lot. How much was the machine? It's, the machine is no charge. It's just a monthly fee for the charge. It's $268. Yeah. I just looked it up on Amazon. You can buy one for five hundred and sixty-one dollars. Depends on what it is, I guess. We have to. Uh, this is a lease. This is well, I mean, you should buy it outright for five sixty-one. We'd have to look into that. Is this a pitney post machine? No, it's not a pitney post machine. It's not a postage machine. No, I looked up um, a folding a, machine. Right. Yeah. This is a Martin Yale paper it's the folding machine. Same one machine. we have in Boca. That's all I know about it. Right. Well, but if something goes wrong with it, when we buy it off of there, where do we go to get it fixed? Who's going to service it is, I guess, my question. Well, you, could buy four, you could buy four of these a yeah, year. No, I get it. But again, we don't buy off of Amazon. We don't, we don't buy off of Amazon. So you could probably get it from uh, any of the other things. I will I'll, I'll, I'll get some additional information. Ready to move on? Yes, please. Okay. Line 78, uh, this is computer and IT expenses. Uh, the IT director wants to replace 10 PCs and monitors this year, three printers or scanners, and six battery backups. That totals $18,350. Uh, this line item also includes um, backup and support associated with all the costs for WPRF and the allocated departments such as entertainment. Um, it includes the ABDI gate access fee that we pay monthly of $375, as well as an allocation of our Microsoft license and various other licenses and services or projects. So $32,740. Next, line 79, top of page 6, is copy machine. This is the monthly lease payments for three copiers, uh, plus estimated annual uh, charges for usage, as well as toner staples, and you have to pay property taxes on the darn machine. So a budget of $13,000 for the year, which is $200 less than what it was this year. 
uh, the next several lines down through 85, Abby went over last week, so we can skip down to line 86, other social activities. These are the costs for the decorations and the food or prizes associated with the Sweethearts Fall, the Halloween dance, the New Year's Eve dance, the Fourth of July, holiday lighting, and we've added back a holiday concert for $2,000, so a total of $11,250. Can I just ask a question? Certainly. These paid lunches that we have, is that in this line? No. <laughs> it is. I'm just curious. Oh, I mean, everybody thinks that the PR is buying food for it. I mean, no, that's not right. No, no. We're paying for it. Right. Of course we're That's under entertainment and meals on okay. line 66. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, uh, line 87 um, is titled Karaoke, but this is uh, where we're budgeting the Tuesday dances, budgeted that to continue weekly, year-round, and the karaoke once weekly. So a budget of 15600 which is the exact same thing we have budgeted this week, I mean this year. Line 89, independent fitness instructors. <coughs> You'll see here, this is for the um, exercise class that we offer three classes daily, four days a week, and one class a day for five, on the fifth day, sorry. Uh, there's several different independent contractors that teach these classes. The one outside lady, we've been paying $40 an hour, and she now wants an increase to $60 an hour. Say bye. Uh, gas one. Excuse me. Say bye. It's not that simple. Get somebody else. Who it is it? Get I can't. I haven't been able to find anybody else. We had some guy on the hook who was going to teach Tai Chi. He wanted 50. I tried to talk him down to 40, and I lost him. When she started, she's a silver sneakers instructor, by the way. So when she first came, she wanted 50. That was a year ago. I talked her down to 40, and she stayed. But now, if she got so she wanted the 50, now she wants an additional 10 for inflation. She, I have two residents who are, who are um, teaching classes, but she is our mainstay, and we've been looking for two years now, trying to get more people to come on, and having a very difficult time. Very difficult. I've had residents who've called and said, oh, well, we've heard about this person. They bring me the information. That's how we found this one woman, the Silver Sneakers instructor. But we just couldn't get anybody else to come on board. It's, you know it now. It's really about the bottom line, the dollar. That's what they want. Right? We got away for, with this for years, paying the least amount possible. And I always go for the lower amount, always. But she's our only game that we've got, that's it. The residents love her, her classes are full over the summer months, which is very nice. We didn't used to have that kind of attendance. So she's turned that around for us. So. Is she upgrading her silver sneakers to gold sneakers? <laughs> 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 and Ready to move on? Okay. Oh, hold on. Oh, sorry. Are you talking about Gailey? I am. I agree with you. I see. I sit outside her classes all the time, and they're jammed. And they she, love her. They love her, and I do believe she's well worth <laughs> the money. And she has some more kind of certificates to, you know, get a set of sneakers. Excellent. Is excellent. Like platinum? Yeah. Okay. Line 90. Line 90 is printing. This is the printing cost for the recreation payment coupons plus various office printing with a 5% increase, $9,450. Line 91, Abby went over last week. Line 92 is for signs. That's for new signage is needed in the main clubhouse and Hastings. Some of the signs are peeling and are need replacing. Um, employee parking, no parking, various room signs, whatever. $2,650. Line 93, Abby went over last week. Line 94 is ticket sales expenses. 
this is the 65 cents per ticket that is sold under our um, audience view program that replaced Vendini, less the dollar and convenience fees that we collect from the residents that choose to purchase online, um, as well as the merchant service fees, so $21,000. Yes, David. Uh, I'd just like to ask a question about line number 89. Is this the same person that was uh, doing a Sunday aerobics at the uh, residence pool? Dolly? No, no, not Dolly. No. Yeah, Dolly. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Well, it was aerobics classes per week at Hastings and guest pool. Yeah, so we is have that, Dolly, and that, we have done on a, Is that still done on a Sunday? No, she does Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Are you yes. sure it's not done on a Sunday anymore? She's not getting paid on Sunday. I'm only I didn't ask her if she was, I, I didn't ask you if we were paying her. She's still doing that on a Sunday. You're telling me she's doing that? I'm not class? telling you anything. I'm asking you. You're the people that are on, on site. I'm unaware. I'm unaware. No one has told me that. Not security, not anybody. So okay. I guess I'm going to have to ask that question, Dolly. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I've heard. Ready to move on? No. Oh, yes. Under your side. Okay. Why not get Speak up. or purchase a cricket? What's a cricket? Is it a cricket? Is it a scrolling sign? No, a cricket is, it, you can make signs with it. My name is talking about a Hermes signage no. machine? No, no. A cricket. Who would make a sign? A cricket is part of the flashing on a roof. What are you talking yeah, about? Got, oh, yeah. You know, it's a printer. You buy a cricket and it cuts out the letters. You sit there, you put, it, put a thing on it, and then you put it on there, put it, and it's done. Mm -hmm. Anybody can do this. <laughs> you got thousands and thousands of, of, of housewives and, and whatnot that, that go out and buy this thing, and they they do scrapbooking with it. I don't I'm not talking about uh, an eight by you know, a four by eight sign. I'm talking little signs. That's what you guys are doing, right? What signs are you talking about? Yeah, we're talking about signs outdoors. So what are we talking about? Signs that say employee parking or no that parking. That can be done. I, I bought a cricket just just a few weeks ago. I haven't used it yet. Sure, the cricket was a fun. It cost me such a ten bucks for a roll. Heat presses. Well, it's, it's spelled C R I C U T. So they're pronouncing it cricket. Fry pot cricket. It's called a cricket. I don't know. I would have to look into this. It says introducing card mat two by two. I don't know if that would work for us, but I'd have to look into this. For the cost of what you're doing, you have a pretty make all the signs you want. You can include the material in that. Yeah, I'll just like that. Hey, Bob, are they weatherproof? <laughs> it's vinyl, it is. It's a, it's a vinyl sign. Final letters. Yeah, well, you have to put it on something. Then you got to buy a post. Yeah, yeah. 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 you buy a post. You cut it out, right? Drill holes. Drill holes. All right. So he will check it out. Ready to move on? Up top of the next page, 7 of 8, line 96, auto expense. Uh, asking for a budget of $25,150, uh, up primarily because of the rising cost of fuel and we've had quite a, we, this year we had a lot of uh, gator repairs, so uh, they did a lot of use by the maintenance staff, so I would assume um, 
school food. We'll continue to make repairs in the following year. But hopefully the fuel will be continue to go down and we'll be under budget there. Line 97, bank charges. Um, this is based on the charges for the, our, um, our DDA account. I've included a 5% increase uh, because the banks have been increasing all their banking fees and the earnings credit that we get from the money seed in your operating account is still at a minimum amount. So eighteen thousand seven hundred dollars. Line ninety eight recruiting expense, it's only one hundred and fifty dollars. This is cost to advertise for employment. Okay. Line ninety nine licensing fees. Uh, this is primarily three fees or li annual licenses that are related to the theater, BMI, ASCAP, and CSAC, as well as the pool permits and elevator permits. Uh, I have not budgeted for a payment to CSAC this year because we still have a, a credit that we're using up from when we had paused all the licenses uh, during COVID. So 17000 $860. Line 100, discounts earned. This is when we pay vendors uh, before the actual due date and they offer us the discount to do so. The lion's share of this is from the discount that we get with the annual payment of BMI because it's usually uh, around, you know, like I said, $1,191 discount for that license to pay the whole thing up front instead of space it out over the year. Line 101, miscellaneous. This is a conglomeration of many things. Um, this year we're over budget due to, um, we had to do our crowd control uh, training, which was $1,250, and we had to purchase a new TV for the party room. And we used to show the movies while the theater is being closed. This is also coffee for performers, employee of the month, and background checks for prospective employees. <coughs> miscellaneous expenses, and $2,000 for a replacement switcher and miscellaneous accessories for the TV being used in the party room for movies. $7,400. Line 102, miscellaneous entertainment. Abby went over that last week. So that concludes that section. Line 104, accounting fees. This is the allocation of uh, payroll uh, for the, the corporate office for general ledger accounting, the cash management, accounts payable, accounts receivable, payroll and benefits administration, budgeting, financial oversight, and IT, $172,670. Line 106, bad debt expense. This is strictly a guess on my part. Um, this year I budgeted 10,000 and it looks like we're gonna come in around 15, so I keep it at 15. Okay, so that brings us to the last page that spells out the calculation of the coupon. So we've not made any changes today. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. We went with Glow. No, with the table first. I had oh. Glow's number in, in well, that was Glow's number. I assumed we were saying yeah. Glow in these numbers yes. that come down online at the top of the page on line 109. It says proposed budget, $5.6 million. Mm -hmm. That does include um, keeping GLOW uh, contract in place. So that calculates $59.42 per unit per month. If you'll see down on line 113 where this is yellow, this is replenishing your windstorm reserve. And that's $7.32 per unit per month. That totals sixty-six dollars and seventy-four cents. I'm reducing the coupon for the difference between what I estimated the surplus was going to be in the previous fiscal year with what the actual results was. So we're taking a credit there, reducing it a dollar thirty-eight. 
So that brings us to $65.36, but that does not include putting anything in your contingency or infrastructure reserves. And you know we're going to be using all of that reserve up mm -hmm. to cover the HVAC project. Mm -hmm. If you choose not to fund anything in that reserve, that leaves us when we deduct the current monthly coupon of $51.75, that leaves us with an increase of $13.61 per unit per month. <coughs> right now it's $13. That's bringing it back to where it is now, around eight hundred thousand dollars. That's that's not what we need to have. We need to have nine hundred thousand dollars. It would be great if it did. And that should reflect what we need, not what we have. Well, that's your decision. Yeah, that's what we're here for. Right. Uh, where is it written that the monthly coupon for the HVAC is one hundred and thirty-seven decides they don't want to recover it in one year, it doesn't have to be. That's, that's your choice. It's just a question. Um, Do you want to take that chance? I, I think it's foolish that we're, we're taking it to begin with, but do you want to take the chance that between now well, and next year, a hurricane is not going to hit us? We may have one headed this way right now. Possible. I just put it on the table. Is it critical? Seven dollars and whatever, thirty-two cents. Do we have to reconstitute the windstorm deductible in one year? By just going to two years, you cut it in half. Right? We can do that. Well, well no, I mean, there's got to be consensus. Well, know. sure. That was good. Uh, is the five dollars is included the five dollars to in, to go back into the reserve fund? No. Is it not included in this number, right? You're correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's um, plus as recent experience tells us, unanticipated things happen. Yeah. Catwalks collapse, uh, blah blah blah. Right. Uh, I think that risk is worse than the hurricane risk. Well, we could go back to the way it was years ago, but we had a problem. We, we allocated money, reserved it for a year, and then did the repairs. Yes. Instead of having a pool that can be dipped into at will. Right. And uh, another question, I don't see it. Monica could probably clear it up. Please. Monica could probably clear it up in a minute. I see we're repaying what you advance against <coughs> the air condition, right? That was the whole lawsuit, and you're taking out the letter of 2007. I'm looking here, how are we paying the balance? If I'm not mistaken, it was estimated at three and a half million dollars. So I don't see who that's accounted for, and you could show it to me. I was just looking at it. Yeah, it's I'm looking at on it. this first sheet, yes. this blue line, estimated available reserve funds between August 31st <gasps> and October 31 is $2,746,000. Uh, yes, I see that. Okay, then the demand letter that was dated August 17th, I've laid out what that is, what was spent on the actual project what was in the demand letter that totals two million one hundred and forty six thousand dollars right the remaining amount to be spent to complete the job is one million two hundred and eighty nine thousand dollars so where is that from? that's what's left on the contract yeah but i'm saying is that on this budget yes it is <laughs> yeah, look on line 55. It's page 3 of 6. Yeah, you see that red number, $3,436,000? That's coming directly from this schedule here. 
That's where the expense is and the revenue to offset it is on the first page on line, line five. And then the shortfall is the $689,000, which the committee approved to take from the Winds Farm Deductible Reserve to fund that. And that is the $7.32 if we were replenishing that reserve in the next budget year. Yes, sir. Does, am I reading a Pittsburgh page correctly? There'll still be $140,000 left in the windstorm reserve? Mm hmm Okay, good. Mm -hmm. I don't, I have another question. Would it affect our insurance premiums if we took two or three years to no. Get no. No. Okay. But we still have about 140 sitting there. Okay. Right. Alshon, uh, I'd like to throw out, I'd like to make a motion that the windstorm replenishment fund go to $4.32 and put $3 into the, uh, the reserve fund. That's my motion. So it would be seven dollars and thirty-two cents, which would keep the coupon the same. We would go along with replenishing fifty percent over two years, and would be done. And we could still be putting money into our reserve fund. That's my motion. I said that. Does this sound uh, feasible? <coughs> Certainly. It All right. We got a motion. Do we have a second? I said that. Yes. I, okay. I got a quick announcement. Uh, okay. Queen Elizabeth. Yes. All right. Sick transit, Gloria Monday. Um, okay, we got the discussion on this motion. It's a very interesting. Go ahead, David. With that uh, four dollars and thirty-two cents, what is the uh, forecasted uh, coupon increase? Same that's here. Thirteen dollars and sixty-one cents. So we don't have anything in for replenished windstorm. You're just going to make it 432. Instead of 732. Right. The way the way it's done right now, there would be not the five dollars was not included on to to go back into the reserve fund. But David's suggestion, instead of putting all the money back into contingency, cut it in half, do it over two years, and have the reserve three dollars. It wouldn't change the bottom line and it wouldn't hurt anybody. Otherwise, it would go up to $18. And you're punishing both. And, and you're, doing, you're doing both equally without hurting the unit owner. Yeah, that's, that's kind of clever. Any further discussion on this? Here. Richard, yes. Where are you looking? Oh, Doc. Oh, Just that what Fausto proposed would be added on over the year to the 140 is already in there. Yeah. So we pass on pretty fast. We'll be back to where we are. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on this? It's a damn good idea. Okay, you want to call it? Also, what is the wall piece? Yes. Can you clarify the exact wording of your motion? The exact wording of my motion is to put the, the windstorm reserve fund. <laughs> be funded at a rate of $4.32 per unit. And the, in the reserve fund be replenished at a rate of $3 a month per unit. I work with numbers, but then I don't know share. <laughs> Who seconded that? John. 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 Thank you, John. Okay, so we've got the motion that I uh, yes. also just John. reiterated, seconded <laughs> by John. Uh, John, have you vote? Yes. Uh, Ruth Grease? Absolutely. Yes. Joy Estrosi? Yes. 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 Yes.